and I'm going to be showing you some from the past. One of the things I've been involved with uh, my fly tying career is setting up fly tying theaters and been involved with the many conclaves that fly fishing groups and clubs have over the country. And they uh, really highlight tires that you may not have ever met. And one of the best ones is ones in Idaho, both the Western Idaho Expo and the uh, Eastern Idaho Expo, which is in Idaho Falls. Uh, they've been doing these fly tying get together for a long time. We're talking over 30 years. So I want to do some highlights from some that I filmed in 2009 and 2010. And you will get a chance to meet some names you know, and some, maybe some names you didn't know. And one of the nice things about tying at these expos is all the uh, excitement and sounds of people going around telling lots and lots of fly fishing stories. Most of them may be exaggerated. But one of the nice things about the theater is you get a chance to listen to the tires talk about it, their experiences uh, and, and answer questions. I, I think you're going to enjoy them. Uh, we're going to start this uh, week with uh, uh, several. Uh, we'll try to give you the most information. And I know some of you are going to say, wow, you know, I don't know about the materials. Well, these are really uncut. So, you know, you do your best on figuring it out. But I think you're going to enjoy the interaction uh, with the crowd and with the tires. And really, uncut un and, I think, extremely fun. Let's get going. Today uh, we're going to be tying a few of my favorite patterns, flies like Zelon Midge, Chimitates and Midge Emerger, a Sparkle Dun, which is a great uh, uh, pale morning dun, Blue Wing Olive Emerger, Mayfly Emerger, tied in various sizes and colors. We'll tie an X and an Iris Caddis, both very effective caddis patterns for western as well as uh, fishing caddis emergences throughout the country. Um, and we'll tie an egg laying caddis for sure, which is a real important pattern uh, to use whenever you come upon uh, egg laying female caddis. So with that said, uh, let's have at it. <laughs> you know it all, come on. You should be teaching this. You're tying, right? Just let me know whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. First fly we're going to tie today will be uh, the egg laying caddis. And you know, a few years ago, fishing uh, some egg laying activity on the Madison River early in the morning, July and August, during the Hydropsyche, which is the tour de force, the, the main force of caddis on the Madison, I found a need to, to basically to tie an egg laying caddis. Before uh, that time, you know, an, uh, a simple Elk air caddis, if you will, would suffice, but these fish are getting fished over and they get a little tougher to fool. So with that in mind, we came up with the egg laying caddis, which I think is even easier to tie than a standard X and a elk air caddis. And we begin by tying on a bright colored egg sack, and I use Zelon for that because it floats very well. And if you look at the egg sack, of most caddis species, it's a brilliant light olive to a brilliant almost chartreuse, if you will. So we dye Ceylon to imitate that color. Next, I'm going to take CDC on a rope 
This is CDC that's wound on thread. It's readily available. Um, floats like a cork provided you dress it with uh, dry magic or of course frog's fanny or another desiccant light powder. And now we're going to wrap this CDC fibers on a cord forward to form the thorax. Now resist temptation here. A lot of people want to spend a lot of time trimming, if you will, all these little shaggy CDC fibers and you're just destroying the desired effect that you want this fly to portray and that's kind of a bedraggled body of a female caddis that's been basically shuttled around the Mattis River and other caddis rivers for about three weeks. The caddis species live three or four weeks. They're able to uh, ingest moisture into their system, but they take a lot of punishment um, to their bodies and their systems. And so they, they look basically like that. And it also imitates uh, emerging, or I'm sorry, legs, if you will, the legs of a caddis. Next, I'm going to take two or three CDC puffs or tufts. And we're going to form the wing out of CDC. Simply measure the wing. You want it to go slightly back beyond uh, the bend of the hook, basically uh, midway through the, the egg mass. Tie that on top. Again, two or three feathers will be enough, CDC tufts or puffs, if you will. Bind those down real well with your working thread. And finally, we're going to take CDC dubbing. And notice the CDC dubbing. And we're going to simply dub that on our thread fairly loosely. Again, we want to provide the uh, illusion, if you will, of legs. And caddis, when they lay eggs, are really bedraggled. They're having a tough time laying their egg mass quite often. They skitter as they expel that egg mass and deposit it on the surface film. And now we'll whip finish. This is called the CDC egg laying caddis. A very, very effective fly, one that's easy to tie and one that floats very, very well. Provided again that you dress it with dry magic and follow up with a desiccant like frog's fanny. And notice that egg mass. That's very important to have, I think. Uh, quite often color does not seem to make much of a difference. Sparkle, if you will, will suffice, but on this particular pattern I think you really want to spend time imitating the color of that egg mass.